بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى بركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الحمد لله we discuss how we are going to achieve our our transcendent from the level of نبصل أمارة بسوء تنبصل أوامة and نبصل مطمئنة and how from this graph we are using the model of Al Imam Ghazali Ghazali Hujatul Islam Imam Ghazali of how he journeyed towards an nafsul mutmainna. In the previous video, I've explained to you uh, because he has written these four books, Ihya Ulum Din, the revival of religious learning, as a way forward for us to follow him. All right, very detailed four books, four volume about how we're going to achieve excellence in terms of our iman, Islam, and how we're going to achieve our excellence in terms of our journey towards. Napsul Mutma in in this world. So that is his purpose of writing these four books, okay, and all the secrets behind it. And I explain to you, he begins with worship. There will be no iman without worship. So he begins with worship. So we must acknowledge Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and then work with our ibadah, ubudiyah to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in terms of understanding the nature of knowledge, the foundation of belief, the mysteries of cleanliness, both of the physical cleanliness and cleanliness of the heart. Secrets of the prayer, zakah, charity, fasting, pilgrimage, excellence of the Quran, zikrullah, and action of how we're going to have a productive life as a mu'min and a Muslim for us to achieve the best, fulfill the best, and receive the best from Allah subhanahu wa taala until we achieve nafsul mutmainna and return to Allah in the state of nafsul mutmainna. So his second book and third book is on the aspect of. Constructive virtues. Eh? So, the book of constructive virtue, part one, that is, he talks about tauba, patience and gratefulness, fear and hope, poverty and renunciation of this dunya, and then tauhid and tawakkul ala Allah. Then his fourth book, the book of constructive virtues, part two, he talks about love and attachment, will, intention and truthfulness, meditation, introspection, pondering over good, and then pondering over death and subsequent events in the hereafter. So you can see this is a complete book. Uh, the four books uh, we, we have to do, and then we have one more book. That is the last book of how we're going to protect ourselves from the destructive evil. Because once you have practiced all these things, if we are not careful, we will slip down uh, through the path of the self-destruction, through ujub, takabur, riya, and so on. Many of the negative uh, uh, ideas of uh, negative pers uh, personality trait that will will negate all the good that we have done. So today I'm just going to discuss uh, some aspect of this aspect of tauba, patience, gratefulness, fear and hope, poverty and renunciation, and tawhid and tawakkal. Uh. So I just again this book of constructive virtue. All right, here Alumuddin. I just take a few few uh, paragraph. Okay, so this is a paragraph on uh, tauba. All right, he says there's no doubt that the evil thoughts that cross our mind are harmful. And to be free from them is a sign that we are perfecting ourselves. Right? That means we are journeying towards mutmainna. Perfection is not compulsory according to Sharia. That means we cannot have perfect uh, our iman so perfect that's always going up. All right, but to strive for perfection, that is what we need. We need to do. Tauba is necessary. So, what is the meaning of tauba that is necessary under these circumstances? The answer is: human beings are not free from greed from the beginning of our birth. So tauba is not to give up, but it is to complete what the past sins that we have done, and to be repentant, and therefore strive to change. If a person follows his passion, a dusty smoke arises in his heart as a result. When the layer of smoke in the heart rust falls into it, as a mirror is filled up with smoke, out of the breath of man. So if you, uh, the breath, our mirror of life become. Uh, cloudy. Allah says, "No, nay, rather, the rust has fallen in their heart for what they have acquired." So this is where Allah tells us about the the heart that is being going to be sealed, uh, because of the rust. So when the rust is gathered on, there falls therein a seal. So Allah put the seal on the heart. As as the mirror becomes ugly if the dust falls upon it, I mean layer and layer of dust. 
It is therefore not sufficient to give up only of the, of the dust of passion. So, what kind of dust? He's talking about the dust of passion. Alright? But also to remove the dust that's already there. So, we have to remove from our life the sins. Eh? He, he compare this dust as our sins. In order to see our face in the mirror, it is not only necessary that we should, we should, there should be no smoke, that means no, no, no further sin, but all the smoke and dust gathered in the past must be removed. So we must do the cleansing process. Eh? The smoke of sins and the passions on the heart should be removed by the light of divine worship. All right? So this is one example in which when we talk about Tauba, he used the parable of the dust and he used a greater parable in the other uh, surah where he explained about the surah of where Allah, ex Allah is the Nurus Samawati Wal Out and how this is linked to our nature. Alright, so this is Tauba. Then he talks about patience and gratefulness. Alright, so patience is the key. Okay, so I take another few paragraphs. There are different kinds of patients. The first kind of patient is to have patience over physical pain. So if we are painful, as we get old, if we have pain in the knee, pain in the leg, pain in the heart, uh, pain, pain, pain in the body. Such a patient is a difficult task, especially when we are doing our ibadah, our divine service. Or we are having pain because of accidents and uh, other dangers such as beating, or serious disease as we go through life. Eh? So this is, we require patience to, to face all the challenges of life. If patience is observed according to the dictates of the religion that is Islam, it is praiseworthy. The second kind of patience is inclini uh, to have inclination. The second kind of patience uh, is to avoid the inclination of evil and greed of passion. So we have to get away from evil and the greed of passion. To have patience at the greed of our belly, our food, eh, eating, eating until we go become bloated and fat, and as well as the, uh, the desire of the sexual passion, uh, we need self-control. Another kind of patient is bravery, is patience when we are in the battlefield. Uh, forbearance is patient by making sure that we do not get angry. So expansion of the breast through patience turns our fortune. Renunciation is patience from the extreme uh, so-called uh, worldly pleasures. Huh? Satisfaction is patience of being happy with whatever possession that we have uh, in this dunya. So from here we can see that when the prophet was asked about faith, he replied that patience is faith. Therefore, there's no act of faith more difficult than patience. So this is where we have to live a life with patience. Huh? And then we have gratefulness. So there is a model where Al Ghazali explained in detail of how we can be grateful to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in many aspects. Eh? So he quoted the hadith. He quoted the uh, the ways of the Arifin, all those who are grateful to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. We can we can do that every moment of our life. The moment that we are awake, before we sleep, we are grateful that Allah gave us sleep, all right, and protect us from the evil of darkness. As we wake up, we are grateful to Allah. The first thing we do is to be grateful that Allah has given back our soul so that we can live for another day. As we eat, uh, as we walk, uh, we are grateful for the legs, uh, the ability for us to walk to the mosque, for example. As we eat, we are grateful for the food that Allah gave us, as the, the fortune that Allah gave us, everything in this dunya. So from the day that we are born until the day that we pass on, uh, there is a whole series of gratefulness because when we are grateful, according to the Quran, as also quoted by Imam Ghazali, Allah will give us more. But if we are kufur, then Allah will, his punishment is very severe. Alright, then Al Ghazali talk about fear and hope. So what is the fear? Fear of transgression. Fear of receiving the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fear of going away from the path of truth. Alright, so that is very important for us to know. And hope. Hope for the love of Allah, hope for the mercy of Allah, hope for the grace of Allah, hope for the completion of our life under the shade of the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the nur that He has given us. Alright? So in chapter 4, it talks about poverty and renunciation. These are for the Arifin, those who have reached a very high level. 
they are not even bothered of this dunya. That means they live in sim uh, a simple life, uh, just having sim simple basic food, simple shelter. They are not aspiring for this dunya that we are aspiring. Uh. We are aspiring with so many things. All right? We are aspiring for our uh, luxurious home. We are aspiring for the uh, luxurious food. We are aspiring for the luxurious uh, transportation, the best cars or whatever it is. So we, we are... We are uh, controlled by the passion of this dunya. So we must have some idea that simplicity, minimal requirement, and then you reach the level of renunciation of zuhud, that you renounce the, the many aspects of the dunya. No doubt you got to live in the dunya as, as usual, but the highest level of those who have reached this level, they forgo the dunya for the akhirat in the way of jihad, in the way of struggle uh, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then in chapter 5, we go back to Tawheed and Tawakkal, his explanation of the nature of Iman, how we are going to express our submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our allegiance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and how we maintain this Tawheed in whatever circumstances that we face. And there are many, many examples that he explained in this book, and then how we are going to face the world by having reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tawakkal ala Allah, and then if we can do all that, what we are doing is we are perfecting ourselves. That means from the journey of lawammah, we are trying to aspire for mutma'inna and aspire for the best of the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He bestow upon us as His true and sincere servant, as Khalifa on this earth. Always remember, we are striving to make ourselves good, to help others to be good, and make this world good in the way that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that we live in this world in the way that we are progressing towards Napsul Mutma'inna, the consciousness, the model of beauty of our mind, our, our roh, our cup, our akal and our jasad, all consonant in a holistic, integrative manner for us to achieve peace, happiness and success in this world and the hereafter, inshallah.